Executive Vice President, U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Global Intellectual Property Center. Welcome, Mr. Elliott. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman and Commissioners, for the opportunity to, to comment on U.S.-India trade relationship. Uh, we commend uh, former Chairman Max Baucus and ranking, ranking Member Oren Hatch and the Senate Finance Committee and Chairman Dave Camp and Ranking Member Sandal Levin of House Ways and Means for requesting this investigation. Today I'm, I'm going to focus my testimony on industry concerns associated with India's IP environment. Firstly, it is important to note the critical role intellectual property plays um, in, uh, spurring, uh, in creating jobs and spurring innovation. According to the US Department of Commerce, US IP industries account for $5 trillion of the nation's GDP, 60% of all exports, and 40 million jobs. In short, intellectual property drives knowledge economies. In 2010, the then President of India declared the next 10 years to be India's decade of innovation. Unfortunately, India is failing to rise to this challenge and is clearly heading down the wrong path. Particular policy, regulatory and legal decisions over the last two years have undermined business confidence in India's IP environment. This has impacted investment, international trade and, in and India's <coughs> own innovative potential. Two weeks ago, the US Chamber of Commerce released the 2014 edition of the International IP Index, which maps IP environments over 25 countries around the world using 30 indicators. The index covers patents, trademarks, copyrights, trade secrets, enforcement, and the ratification of international treaties. The indicators were developed in consultation with uh, academic researchers and industry sectors, and the index measures specific provisions that industry sees crucial to creating and maintaining an innovative business community. It also includes global best practices defined by a number of international treaties. Both the inaugural IP index, which was produced in 2012, and the 2014 edition found India ranked last overall behind the likes of Brazil, Russia, and well below China. We have provided uh, the index as part of our testimony, so you can clearly see why the business community is so concerned with India at present. I would like to provide a few specific examples. Within the biopharmaceutical industry, there have been a number of recent examples of, uh, that, uh, that demonstrate a clear pattern of deterioration of IP rights. In March 2012, the Indian Patent Board issued a compulsory license on Nexavar, a patent drug, a, a Bayer drug used to, to treat a number of very severe cancers. The Patent Board claimed to be acting in accordance with the TRIPS agreement. However, they compulsory licensed Nexavar partly on the grounds that it was not manufactured locally. This is not a standard provision of TRIPS. In April 2013, the Indian Supreme Court denied a patent on the Novartis cancer drug, Gleevec, even though the patent was recognized and valid in 40 countries around the world. Despite what some may have you believe, it is hard to argue that these cases are about access to medicines. In many of of these instances, the innovative drug manufacturers make the drugs available either free of charge or at a greatly reduced cost to Indian patients. For example, in the Gleevec case, Novartis was providing the leukemia treatment to 16,000 patients free of charge. This represents 95% of the patient population. The remaining 5% of patients were reimbursed, insured, or participated in a very generous copay program. When the Indian Gleevec generic entered the market <coughs> following the Supreme Court's decision, they priced the generic version at approximately $2,100 per annum, which is around three to four times the average income in India. Business concerns with India's IP environment extend well beyond the pharmaceutical sector. India has an extensive copyright industry producing more feature films than any other country in the world. However, the government's copyright legislation fails to adequately protect Indian and international creators and innovators. Pirated movies take on an average of 3.1 days to appear on the streets or on pirated sites. 
the music industry values annual music piracy in India at $431 million. PC software piracy in India is valued at $2.9 billion per annum. While the Indian government passed much needed copyright legislation last year, um, it contained many deficiencies that, will, that fall well short of the intended purpose of the legislation, which was to implement the WIPO Copyright Treaty. In 2013, India's Intellectual Property Appellate Board denied Mon um, Monsanto's patent application for a genetically engineered method of increasing climate resilience in plants. Notably, the patents that have been compulsory licensed, denied, or revoked in India are recognized elsewhere in the world, positioning India as the international outlier. India also finds itself an outlier with respect to taxation as it applies to intellectual property. Specifically, India currently assesses tax by allocating a share of the company's worldwide operating profits, despite the fact that the research center within India that contributes to the global project bears no financial risk and, and doesn't own the resulting intellectual property. This methodology is inconsistent with international practice and is not accepted by US tax authorities, resulting in controversy and double taxation. The continued deterioration of, intellectual, of Indian intellectual property environment will have a far will, will have far reaching implications on foreign direct investment, technology <coughs> transfer, and economic growth. Between 2012 and 2013, reports reports uh, suggest that Indian foreign direct investment dropped by approximately 36 percent. However, there are leaders in India that recognise the importance of investment in innovation. Just last week, the Vice President of India expressed support for science and innovation, noting that they are indispensable for addressing major contemporary challenges in economic growth and social transformation. In May 2013, the President of India stated that innovation, India's innovation bottom line is not very encouraging, as the number of patent applications filed annually in leading countries like the US and China is roughly 12 times more, more um, than that of India. <clears throat> the President called on the private sector to increase their share of spending on research and development <coughs> levels prevalent in other economies such as the United States, Japan and South Korea. The Chamber commends the President for his vision and urges the government to implement IP policies consistent with the President's comments. Our members want to invest in India. They want to partner with the Indian government and Indian business to develop innovative industries. However, due to the ongoing deterioration of IP rights, the business community is fast losing confidence in the IP environment. This is bad for investment, bad for trade, and bad for India. We applaud the US International Trade Commission's decision to undertake a Section 333 investigation into India's trade practices and we urge you to consider the implications of the deteriorating IP environment in India. Thank you. Thank you. Our next